Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Brethren, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to our Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending to you Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tendering the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse and Jesse sent and had the young man brought to, to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Besides restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths. For his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With 
is your blood and your step that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with, with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed, came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, Why do you have, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one is speaking, the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us may have had experiences where we cannot see, and how, how, maybe at times, how scary it might be to not be able to see, for whatever reasons, maybe we haven't cleaned our car, we haven't washed it, or, you know, it keeps raining here in El Paso, and sometimes we, we're not used to that, of course, we're in the desert, and all of a sudden we get all this rain and it keeps uh, messing up our car in a sense. Well, we can't be pleased every t uh, all the time, right? But, uh, but we, we understand that we want to see. We, uh, some of us have to wear glasses, uh, and some of us have worn them for the longest time. It just becomes another part of us. But we want to see. We have that desire. And it does produce fear when, when we're not able to see. Fear is, is, is part of the emotions that we might be feeling right now, not knowing what, what lies ahead, what we will see with this virus, this coronavirus. And, and hopefully whatever we see will not distract us from our vision or looking with the eyes of faith. Throughout this time, we're called to walk together, to be united, to see our sister and our brother and our neighbor and, and especially in our parish, this week we will pray for children. These candles were lit and our liturgical committee wanted us to focus on different intentions throughout Lent. And for us then, this week, we chose children. These are intentions or prayers for different parts of our family, different people. And children, of course, are very vulnerable. They were in Jesus' time, and they're definitely very vulnerable in our time. We are called to take care of them. But in taking care of them, hopefully we take care or we help the parents. We as adults will be the good example. As in our baptism, it, we're called to be examples by word, by what we say, and what we do. How, what kind of example do we give our children? So these candles here, right here in front of the altar were, are lit to remind us to pray for children, all our children, for foster children, for the children who have run away, for children who are sick right now, at, maybe at UMC or some of the other hospitals, for those that live in blended or, or broken family homes, for those who suffer from mental health, and also for the children, the victims of clergy misconduct, because these are the most vulnerable in our society. The eyes of Christ teach us to be kind towards children, towards people who have some sort of, maybe a disability of some sort that cannot see literally, physically. And he gives us this, this eyesight so that when the next day we, or the next time we want to hoard things, that we think of the other person, that we just not think about me. God has brought us salvation. But that salvation comes in the sense that we open that gift and in opening that gift of salvation, we have received new sight. But that sight, if we allow it, will help us see that the brother next to us, the sister, that she is created in God's image as we are. In the story of David, in the first reading, we hear that, you know, uh, Samuel thought that he had found, you know, the oldest one was the one God would pick to be the king of Israel, but no or the anointed, and he, it wasn't, it was the youngest. And again, God sees things so differently than we do. But one thing that we understand from today's gospel is that the way God sees is with compassion and love. So he takes compassion on this man who is considered a sinner. That's why he was blind from birth, that maybe his parents sinned. But for God, that doesn't work. That's not, that's not the solution of how to treat people, especially people who might literally be blind, but that we treat them with compassion. So he goes out on his way, even on a Sabbath, to cure, to bring sight to this blind man. Today we are invited to be as kind as Jesus is, so that when we do whatever we might do, whatever things uh, lie ahead with this virus, that we always take the steps 
thinking of the other and being compassionate to our, towards our sister and our brothers, to our, all people, whether they live here in the States or in, in Texas or, or on the other side of the river in Mexico and Ciudad Juarez, that we be kind to all people, to all people. That is our calling. If we choose to, to respond to the call, our response has always been to share kindness. And Jesus does that to the point that this man is able to say, yes, this is the Son of Man, the Son of God. And it reminds me then of family members who have been, who were maybe at one time in their life were blind, physically blind. And they would just see shadows. And, and But they seemed to pick up on the other things. They were seemed to be led, though, by the, the sight they, they could feel, the, how they could make out where people were kind to them, even if they couldn't make out their face, even if it was a kind gesture of a handshake or of um, a gentle gesture of a hug. Today, my sisters and brothers, hopefully we pray to God to give us the sight of Christ, that we may see things as Christ do, like Christ does, and that we might be able to, with that sight, with that sight of faith, we may also bring light to others so that they can see what we see. That these children, these people, wherever they may be, our neighbor, our family, our spouse, our children, at the end are all created in God's image. We're all created in God's image. And we're all loved by the same God. So we walk together in faith through this moment that there is a pandemic, there is fear, and rightfully so. But we walk together, we trust, we, lose, we don't lose our focus and, and see how Christ invites us to trust. He'll walk with us through this illness, through this virus, I'm sorry. And he'll guide us, but may compassion lead every step of the way. Because we are in the moment then of renewing what we see, being kind to the sister and the brother, showing mercy to all people, showing love, let us then renew our promises of baptism that call us to respond by loving our neighbor, by loving our sister and our brother, our children. So I invite you to respond. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. God leads us from darkness into light. Let us offer our prayers for the church, for all people, and for the whole world, especially now during this pandemic. For all God's people, that we recognize our blindness and repent. So Christ may heal us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local representatives, that they consider the long-term effects of their loss, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who think their sins are unforgivable, that they turn to God with trust and His loving mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who take their blessings for granted, 
that they learn generosity of spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who walk in the shadow of illness and death, that your love, your, that your loving presence will be a source of nurturing comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health of Maria E. Soto, Lorenzo Payan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal rest of the soul of Rosa M. Aparicio, Silvia M. Quintana, Hector Torres, Trini Muñoz, Velia Flores Garza, and Juan Alanis, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our community of St. Paul, the Apostle. We pray for each member, especially the children of this community, that as we go through this moment, we will walk together as a community, but also for all our Diocese of El Paso and the church throughout the world and all peoples, that we may be compassionate, that we may be loving towards all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, you defend the poor and the weak, the blind. Listen to our prayer. Lead us out of darkness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and the highest. You therefore, you therefore, Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord, through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy should enter under my roof, but I only say the word and my soul. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life to your unfailing, give life to your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and breath and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we end our Mass, we will lead you in the prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. 